All right, we're going to continue our discussion with particle motion in just a moment, but I want to tell you a story. When I was a young man, I decided to run track. My parents thought I'd be good at sports. They were wrong. So I joined track. And when you run around the track, of course, when you race, you always have to run around the track. And I'm running, and I'm obviously in last place, so I'm so out of shape. I'm in last place. At this point, I'm exhausted. Keep going slower, 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 slower. At this point now, I'm crawling. I'm on my hands and knees, begging for something to end. And slower. At this point, you know, the other runners, they take pity on me. And, you know, they, they, uh, they carry me, you know. They carry me to the finish line. Came in dead last. Did that for an entire for two years. Worst track star ever in the history. But then I took physics. And I had learned something. Displacement. And I told my coach, Coach, I have an idea. Put me in. He's like, we're now you haven't finished a track meet in two years. I don't think this is the right thing for you. And I'm like, coach, give me one more shot. And he's like, all right, you got one more shot at this. And here I am. I'm standing at the front. <laughs> the gun goes off. I don't move. My coach is like, what are you doing? You're going to lose again. I'm like, no, coach. Because if I go around the track, I'm just going to wind up exactly where I started. My displacement is zero. So I'm going to win automatically. And I did. I won world record time. Of course, that's not how it, what, what really happens, right? Dis, displacement and, two, and total distance are two different ways that we can measure distance. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So the first question asks us to find the displacement of our particle, an example in the first video, over the first five seconds. Now, what is displacement? Okay. Displacement is the change in position. Like your delta y, change in y. And that is your final position minus your initial position. You are looking only at the endpoints. And that's all we really care about. We're only looking at the endpoints. So I'm going to go ahead and write out my function here, s of t, and that is t cubed minus 6t squared plus 9t. So when I'm looking for displacement, what I'm looking for is just where did I finish s of 5 minus where I started. My final minus my initial position at t equals 5 minus t equals 0 there. So if I plug in s of 5 into here, now I don't know what s of 5 is, so I am going to use my uh, remainder theorem. This becomes 1, negative 6, 9. Now there's another condition here. There's a 0 there, so we have to put that there. We get 1, 5, negative 1, negative 5, 4, 20, and 20. So my initial position, where well my final position is I am 20 meters away from where I started. My initial position, I can just plug that in, that's just zero. And what we wind up with is 20 meters. Now what this is saying is that this is the distance between where I started and where I finished, between my start and finish points. What it does not include is any time I turn around. So for example, if I'm going up and then I go down and I go up again, that distance between this would be like my 20 meters. That is my displacement right there. 
total distance to get the total distance that we travel we have to include all the bits. Now this is a little more hard with a curvy licious graph like this but in single variable it's not that bad for right now so so we're going to talk more about these curvy things a little bit later. Now if you remember our original particle we move forward one second and then we move backwards for th the next two seconds until t so t equals one and then t equals three and after t equals three we move forever forward so my displacement is basically this distance right here uh, sorry between where I start at five seconds so that's at 20 meters but it does not include the distance that I'm turning around it's like you're pacing back and forth right if I'm pacing back and forth right here between like here's zero meters and here's like let's say 20 meters if I'm pacing back and forth no matter how many times I pace back and forth if I started here and I end here my displacement is 20 meters but I am walking in between there as well so it'd be like 20 plus 20 is 40 right and I keep going 60 that's my total distance so to get total distance what we need are the turnaround points when we turn around and we found those in the first page and then the first part that's right here when is my particle at rest at t equals one and three seconds because take a look between zero and one I'm going forward between one and three I'm going backward so my turnaround points are my critical numbers so that's what we have to find we have to get our critical numbers so I'm going to get my critical numbers which we already have one and three but I also need where I started and finished for the first five seconds we are that's my endpoints I'm starting at t equals zero I'm ending at t equals five and if you're thinking that reminds me of candidates test you're exactly right that's what we're going to use to solve this so what we're going to do is we're going to set up our candidates test so we have t and we have s of t so I'm looking for position remember this is our t cubed minus 6t squared plus 9t my endpoint 0 and 5 and my critical number is 1 and 3 now we already have the values for 0 that was 0 and for 5 we already know that that's 20 so we need s of 1 well to get 1 I just plug it in here my equation 1 minus 6 is negative 5 negative 5 plus 9 is 4 plug into 3 and oh, I'm going to do that over here 1 negative 6 9 0 1 3 negative 3 negative 9 0 0 0 so I'm basically back to where I started so to get the distance traveled now to get that distance that we travel I'm going to look between my turnaround points so between 0 and 1 second how far did we travel we traveled 4 meters between 1 and 3 seconds how far did we travel not negative 4 meters distance is always positive we traveled another 4 meters it's like this if I traveled 4 meters this way 4 meters that way my total is 8 meters so far a lot of times people want to put down this negative right here that's when you get into displacement then between 3 and 5 seconds how far do we travel oh yeah 20 meters so my total distance I traveled is 28 meters and that's our total distance that we traveled right there All right. For part H, it asks us to find the acceleration at time t. So we already know uh, our velocity. Remember, we know velocity is 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. Acceleration, remember, is the derivative of velocity. So that's just going to give me 6t minus 12. So there's our acceleration. We want to find the acceleration after 4 seconds. So if I plug that in, that's 6 times 4 minus 12 
And be careful, we're going to get 12, but remember this is acceleration, meters per second squared. And there's our answer, right here. Okay, so if I wanted to graph my position, velocity, and acceleration, remember we already got position, 1 and 3. Position goes up, then it comes down at 3, and then it goes back up. My velocity curve, it intercepts at 1 and 3. So if this is my position, S of T, to get velocity, it intercepts here. And notice, this is a phase, this is a parabola, so I can graph that. There it is. So there's my velocity curve. Now, to graph acceleration, I need to find out where it crosses the x-axis. Now notice, I'm setting it to 0. 6t minus 12 equals 0, t equals 2. Notice what happens between 1 and 3 at 2. Ah, I have a point of inflection. Remember, this is my point of inflection, which is where that concavity changes from negative to positive. We'll talk about that. So this is going to cross at 2. And it's a line, so it's going to go kind of like this, like so. And there is our acceleration graph. Right there. Notice that the POI, where the acceleration crosses, and where the V of t equals v prime of t, the slope of v, of, the slope of my velocity is zero, they should all kind of line up right there. All right, the last question. I want you to go to video number three, and we'll take a look at speeding up and slowing down. This is big for us. We're going to see this all year long. So you may want definitely watch that video.